am coming to you today from my rather yellow lit um, office, which I, I do apologize for, but we've had a wonderful week of sunshine here in the UK, and all of a sudden, it's turned rainy, dark, cold. I'm, I'm sat here in a in a jumper, and yesterday I was I was, you know, mostly spending my day in shorts. It's um, it's a it's a strange kind of change of weather, and hopefully we will weather it out and it'll be good. But today we're not going to be talking about the UK. Heute sprechen wir über Deutschland. We're talking about Germany today. And I've got a few really exciting things planned for you. So hopefully everybody's ready, everybody's ready to go. And I'm going to switch throughout this webinar. Mostly I've got some slides up so you can read what's on the screen. It's hopefully going to help you as well in the bilingual parts or in the, in the German parts. If you're an English speaker, in the English parts, if you're a German speaker and you're here to learn English or improve your English, whichever one it is, um, the slides should help you. And of course, you've also got a worksheet. So, you know, just give me a shout. Let me know that you've got that worksheet sorted. And your way to communicate with me is through the comment field below. Okay, so let's switch on the little slides for you. So I hope you can all see this. Um, first today, we're going to start off with a few very simple housekeeping messages, just so that you know what's happening, I know what's happening. This is my first bilingual webinar. Please comment and tell me if you've been to one of these before um, and what worked for it and what didn't work. And if not, we're just going to feel our way along. And this is, I think we're going to have a lot of fun today in this German slash English webinar. It should be really, really cool. So first, a few housekeeping messages. I'll talk you through these. Then we're going to go fully bilingual. And at the end, I'll also give you more information about this extremely special event, my invitation to you to the Fluent German Retreat. I can't wait to talk to you about that. So that at the end. But before that, we're going to talk and we're going to learn a little bit more about traveling to Germany. Just give me a second here. Okay. Just arranging all my different screens and things. Just before I start, let me introduce myself to you. So, ich bin Kerstin. And I would love for you to comment. Just tell me a little bit more about why you're learning German. Tell me your name. Tell me where you're from. I'm just going to go in the comments and give a little shout out. It's really nice. Hallo, hallo Udkan, hallo. Na? Schöne Grüße an dich. Wo wohnst du? Wo kommst du her? And hallo, hallo Kiwi. Hi Kiwi. Oh, Kiwi and Sharad Kamraig. Welsh, which is the language I am learning at the moment. So just like you guys, I am a language learner. Uh, tell me your name, tell me where you're from and why you're learning German. I always love hearing those stories. It's really interesting. Everybody's story is a little bit different. And for me, Dwin Charad Kamraig, Achos, or Dwin Dwin Deski Kamraig, Achos, Dwin Dwin Kari, uh Dot uh Paul No Newith and a in the place where I live. <laughs> So as you can see, my Welsh, lots of work still coming. I'm going to stop because we're talking German today. Now, I am from Germany originally. So I am from Germany originally. I was born in Germany and my erste Sprache is Deutsch. My first language is German. I absolutely love learning languages. I started learning languages, I think, when I was informally maybe about six years old that was the first time I fell in love with language we were in primary school and my teacher she had this she brought us this story this song and the activity was to dance and sing a song and the rhythm was cool the song was great it made me really happy but the exciting thing about it what I really fell in love with was that these songs were in foreign languages and it was just it was this song was in Hebrew 
The next year, we sang Sur le Pont d'Avignon, this, <laughs> this little French song. And then the year after, we sang songs in English. And they kept saying, oh, this means this, and this means this, and this is a song about a bridge and something. And I found it so fascinating that people in different places can talk, they talk to each other with entirely different words and sounds compared to what my family might use or what my friends, you know, how we talk to each other. And I didn't realize that, I hadn't realized this, you know, that people could talk to each other using words that I don't use. That's crazy. And I found it really fascinating. And this fascination kind of stuck with me. And I did not have, I'm not a language genius, but I definitely feel that languages kind of came into my heart really early you know it was just really it came really early and i've always been really really interested in it i've always really excited about this so i didn't have a formal language lesson not a single one until the age of 10 and today i am fluent in three languages and i am learning my eighth my eighth language is welsh which you've heard i can sort of begin in you know but I'm feeling better about it every day I'm feeling happy in it um, and this is something really important and now I am bilingual I live in the UK I've moved abroad just like you know many of you are saying already I can tell in the chat so hello Marlon hello Udkan um, du studierst oh studierst auf Deutsch cool yeah and Rebecca zieht nach Deutschland Rebecca is moving to Germany so you guys know what it's like to move to a different country it's pretty amazing I started out as a monolingual person but you don't have to stop there I didn't have to stop there I've been teaching German to people around the world in Mozambique in China in Germany, <laughs> in the Netherlands, in the USA. I teach online. I've been teaching since 2012. And if you want to take one of my German courses and you are especially beginners who want to get a really good foundation in grammar or who want to learn how to pronounce German words perfectly. So after today, if you're feeling like those are your weaknesses, grammar, pronunciation, you want to polish your German, uh, check out school.fluentlanguage.co.uk that's where my German courses live. So you can purchase one, kind of work your way through it. It's also really good for anyone who hasn't used German for a while and is kind of coming back to it. So I can wholly recommend that. I'm just going to drop that link in the chat for you. And if you want to learn more in German and you have an idea for a next fluent course, the next Kirsten course, please, you know, comment and tell me your idea because I'm, I'm always making new courses, so I can't wait to produce new things for you. Okay. Now, let's start with something special. I'm going to work out where to click here. So, dieses Webinar ist zweisprachig. This webinar is bilingual. That's your challenge for today. There will be parts of this webinar where I am only speaking German. So you've got a lot of work to do here. And to help you read the screen, work out where you're at, I have designed the webinar as follows. Wenn ihr die Überschrift auf Rot seht, Dann spreche ich Deutsch. And when you see the headline, the title, this part here, in blue, then I'm speaking English. I've also produced a little worksheet for you. And you can download this worksheet by clicking either above the comment thread where it says download your worksheet here. That should take you to Google Drive or Google Documents or whatever it's called these days. So it takes you to Google and you can go to the menu there and type make a copy or you can print your worksheet. Just make sure you're taking notes because really you want to be using this and you want to be learning as much German as possible. Richtig? Ihr wollt richtig viel Deutsch lernen, neue Wörter lernen und so weiter. Deswegen geht und download your worksheet. Das bedeutet, ihr bekommt das Arbeitsblatt, damit wir zusammen Deutsch lernen. Okay, any questions about how the webinar is working? 
<laughs> yes, I do sound British. <laughs> Any questions about how the webinar is going to work? <laughs> this is so funny. Um, then type your questions in the box and I'll get to you. But this is how it works. So you can do this with, you can understand this without the worksheet. But I would recommend work with the worksheet and then you've got loads of help with you as well. Okay. Today, you're going to learn quite a few things. So you're going to learn viel, viel Deutsch, a lot of German, right? I hope that you've got your worksheet ready. I'm going to talk about what you can do to travel safely and to show good manners in Germany. And my shout out and thanks goes out to a few people, but especially Zoe, who sent me some really cool questions. So Zoe, I incorporated your questions into the webinar and I'll be answering those in particular because they were really interesting. Zoe wanted to know about the best castles to visit in Germany. So I've collected my favorite fairy tale castles. Uh, meine liebsten Burgen und Schlösser in Deutschland. And I have also collected information about how to drive in Germany and a few tips for driving safely in Germany. The last time I went to drive in a foreign country was in Wales and that's not even really a foreign country and now I have to go on a course for better driving. <laughs> so don't be like Kirsten, I've got some tips for you on how to be a good driver in Deutschland, wie man in Deutschland mit dem Auto reist. I'll also tell you a few unknown travel destinations, places maybe that you don't know yet. And finally, at the end of the webinar, I'm so excited. I'll talk to you about how to spend this, this really cool week that I've prepared for you in Germany. It's so exciting. And you will, you will really, really like this. So it's in stunning surroundings. Basically, I am inviting you, the Fluent re German Retreat, I'm inviting you to my home. I cannot wait. <laughs> okay. Right, now let's talk about... Reisen, travel. Und die nächsten, the next minute or so is in German entirely. So please also comment if my German is too complicated for you. I will speak slowly. You've got a few vocab tips in your worksheet. And I will not diverge too much from what is written on the screen. But this is a challenge for you guys. Okay, so warum? Reist du? Warum reist ihr? Utkan, uh, Michael, Joji, Marlon, Rebecca und Kiwi. Warum reist ihr? Was ist, was ist besonders am Reisen? Das habe ich mich gefragt. Und für mich ist Reisen eine, wie eine Schwester für Sprachen. Wenn man Sprachen lernt, dann sieht man andere Menschen. Man sieht andere Länder, man sieht neue Sachen und es erweitert deine Horizonte. Erweitern, das ist, wenn der Horizont klein ist und ein bisschen größer und ein bisschen größer und ein bisschen größer. Es erweitert den Horizont. Auch reise ich gerne, weil ich dann eine Pause machen kann. Hier in meiner Wohnung mache ich jeden Tag Arbeit, Arbeit, Arbeit. Jeden Tag das Gleiche, the same. Und ich so, mit diesen Reisen kann ich eine Pause machen. Ich kann etwas Neues sehen. Mein Gehirn, mein Leben, es ist interessant. Ich sehe interessante neue Sachen. Und dieses Jahr habe ich ein paar Reisen schon gemacht. Bin ein bisschen fertig. Aber ich mache auch neue Reisen. So, I'm planning a few new trips as well. So, dieses Jahr reise ich nach Wales, nach Island, Island, Iceland, ja, und nach Amerika. Das sind richtig coole Trips, richtig coole Sachen, richtig? Und meine Frage an euch ist, wohin reist ihr? Das wäre super interessant. Bitte schreibt einen Kommentar. So, Michael sagt, wir machen eine Fahrt an die Elbe. Oh, schön. Die Elbe ist ein Fluss. Elbe ist ein River in Deutschland. Ähm, auch super, super schön. Eine tolle Idee, gute Idee. So, we're switching to English now. I want to talk a little bit more about, so we just talked about why travel. You know, send us a comment, why traveling? Something new, something exciting. Why travel 
to Germany? Now that's a, a maybe an interesting question for many of you. Um, why would you why would you travel to Germany? I think you are here, hopefully, because you want to travel to Germany. Um, and I think Germany has something to offer offer for everyone. It's a country full of variety. That's what I love about Germany. I'm so proud. This country has mountains in the south. We have rivers and hills in the middle. And then in the north, there is the sea and the country is flat and you don't see any mountains. You can see for a mile because there's nothing. No hill, no nothing. It's crazy. And everything is in Germany. We've got beautiful old castles, but also you can go back 500 years, 1,000 years, you can see Roman remains, things that were built before our grand, 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 grandmothers lived. You can see Bauhaus. It's my favorite architecture, I think. So these are kind of more modern houses. You can see really cool modern architecture. You can see crazy skyscrapers, like in Frankfurt or in Berlin. They're really high, impressive skyscrapers. Not like in America, <laughs> but they, they still are really great. So this is what I love about Germany and what I am proud of. We have more than 2,000 years of history for you. 2,000 years people have been doing stupid things in the world. <laughs> and, and in Germany you can see the traces. You can see every, every step, every road, every train track tells a story in Germany. Sad stories happy stories, hopeful stories. I think we are very proud of this. One other reason to travel to Germany, I think, is because we have got amazing produce. You know, we've got this fresh, beautiful, um, exciting things that you can only really get in, yeah, in Germany, I think, altogether. I'm saying this. <laughs> I know it comes from Turkey and I have a weakness for food in Turkey too. Uh, in Germany, the wine is absolutely world class. If you haven't tried German wine, you stay until the end. I have a special treat for you. German wine is fantastic. My parents are winemakers. My brother is a winemaker. I'm, I'm biased. We have freshly baked bread and, of course, really cool cars. You know, you can come to Germany just for the cars and you will not be disappointed. <laughs> and finally, have you heard this saying before? Das Land der Dichter und Denker, the country or the land of the poets and the thinkers. So Germany is not just a place where things are built and things are made and we are efficient, but Germany is also a place of culture and of thinking. Um, now, do you know any famous German poets? Do you know any famous German philosophers? What do you want to read in German? That would be really great to hear. Yeah, Georgi says, German engineering <laughs> is world famous. Germans like to build things and Germans have a reputation for building things that work. So engineering and maybe not so much computing, but big civil engineering, you know, bridges, trains, just these kind of amazing things. Our train stations, I think, are, are fantastic. So there is so much to see in Germany that you can you can really find out a lot. And so these are my reasons for coming to Germany. Not just I am from there, but also I love it. Now let's talk about where in Germany you can go. A few tips, a few recommendations and places that I really like. So sprechen wir über wo man hinfahren kann in Deutschland. Oh, I've got a few people kind of saying about poetry. Oh, oh, ihr seid, ihr seid ein, ein interessanter Bunch, you know, you're a, you're a good bunch, eine, eine super Gruppe. Schlaue Leute, Heine und Goethe. Mm, so German literature is getting a little bit loved in the chat room right now. That's really cool. Okay. So one place I absolutely just dream dream of. It's, it's beautiful. And here in the north of England, sometimes the beaches are a little bit like in the Baltic Sea, but it's never quite the same. So the Baltic Sea is in the north east of Germany. It's our coast and we share this coast with Denmark, a little bit Sweden, a little bit Poland and 
some of the other Baltic countries. And the Ostsee, that's what we call it, the Eastern Sea, the Ostsee is a really famous and popular place for, where Germans go on holiday. You can go and stay and you spend your day at the beach in a beach basket. <laughs> and that's what you can see on this picture. So it's like a little easy chair. You set this up, you can bring your picnic, there's a little bit of storage, and it protects you from the big winds. And it's a beautiful, beautiful place, the Baltic Sea, an absolute German holiday classic. And we have loved this forever and forever and forever. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been to the Baltic Sea? Have you ever been to other seaside towns in Germany? That would be really interesting to know. So the Baltic Sea, I think, is a fantastic place. And especially the island of Fehmarn. Very, very famous. Okay, so from the beach basket of Deutsch Strandkorb, Strandkorb, from the beach basket, we're going to go to the big cities. Just excuse me. Okay. Als ich diese Liste gemacht habe und gedacht habe, hm, was sind drei tolle Orte, was sind drei perfekte, wunderschöne Orte, habe ich gedacht, ja, die Ostsee, natürlich, die Schlösser und Burgen, natürlich, aber ich muss sagen Berlin. Es ist nicht kreativ, aber Berlin ist eine Stadt, wie keine andere, a city like no other, eine Stadt wie keine andere in Deutschland. Es ist einfach so viel Geschichte, so viele Veränderungen, so viel Neues in dieser Stadt. Sie existiert immer, immer wieder. Berlin ist modern, Berlin ist alt, Berlin ist attraktiv und Berlin ist hässlich. Berlin hat viele, viele Seiten, wie keine andere, like no other, Stadt in Deutschland. Für mich ist Berlin die, nicht die schönste, aber die interessanteste Stadt in Deutschland. Es ist immer wieder etwas Neues und ihr könnt gehen, ihr könnt sehen die Mauer, ihr könnt sehen Trabis und alte Sachen, ihr könnt sehen Geschichte von Hitler aber auch, hallo Angela Merkel <lacht> und Checkpoint Charlie und viele neue kreative Businesses und viele Menschen aus aller Welt, denn Berlin ist international und das Essen ist lecker und es gibt so viele besondere neue Sachen. So für mich, Berlin muss in diese Liste. It's got to be in this list, even if it's not that creative. Hello, our capital. But you, gotta, you can't miss Berlin. Okay, so wir haben Berlin, wir haben die Ostsee und jetzt kommt mein Lieblings, meine Lieblingsempfehlung. So, these are three absolutely, I think, Germany, okay, when I was looking for castles and when I was thinking about which castles in Germany do I like, I was thinking, yes, uh, maybe these ten. <laughs> <laughs> Germany has hundreds of castles everywhere that we don't even know about that you know the, the, and the most famous castle is called Neuschwanstein so I'm just going to type you in the chat a little list of these places that you have seen so that's the order the Ostsee Berlin and then we've got of course Neuschwanstein castle That's the big Disney castle that you've probably seen already. So that's boring. That's full of tourists. We don't really, we, we can do better, right? We can find new castles. So these three on the left. From the left to the right, what you are seeing is number one, Die Wartburg. Die Wartburg in Wittenberg is 
eine sehr, sehr berühmte, is a very famous um, historic German castle. It's, it's a little bit special. The Wartburg in Wittenberg is where Martin Luther very famously was incarcerated. And it's just a, a fascinating place, a fascinating story of Martin Luther. But beyond that, it's a really cool, a really famous castle. You know, it's like this, it's an awesome place to go. And it's stunning. You kind of go up on this hill and you can feel like, you know, you can feel like an old school princess or knight, you know, who's, who's living the old school life. It's fantastic. I really, really love Devout Walk. It's a great place to go. Number two, the castle there, is the castle of the city of Heidelberg. And the reason I wanted to tell you about Heidelberg is maybe not that it has the most beautiful castle in Germany, but because the city is really special. Heidelberg is in the south and it is known for having the biggest or one of the biggest student populations in Germany and also one of the best universities in Germany. Heidelberg is a very, very special place. You can feel and there's been so much you know, knowledge and discovery in this city. So if you like art, if you are one of the people who want to read Goethe and Heine, and I think on a big on a big piece of grass next to the river in Heidelberg under the castle, there couldn't be a better place. It's a fan, it's a fantastic atmosphere in this city. So Heidelberg is your place to go if you want to experience Germany. Uh, you know. The, the chilled out Germany, not Berlin, there's so much going on, but chilled out kind of calm Germany. That's really cool. Okay, and then on the right, Burg Elz. Do you know where Burg Elz is? Have you ever heard of it before? It's located in the Moselle Valley. The Moselle Valley, and it looks like, it often is known as Neuschwanstein, but smaller and without the tourists because it's every you can see it's an intricate little Disney castle in the middle of a forest and what you don't even know from the photo from this photo here is that the Burg Elz, Elz castle is right near the river you don't even drive 20 minutes from the river Moselle which is the most beautiful amazing place in Germany Burg Elz is gorgeous you can go on a tour you can learn so much about you know the duke that lived there before and there's got all the kind of things that you expect to see in a castle like a wonderful dining uh, area and a courtroom and just it makes for the best pictures it's just so so cool book Elz is you know if you want classic german disney castle like zoe did when she sent me her comment um with turrets turrets, the little, the little tower things outside, and with, you know, everything short of a hanging bridge, Book Elz is your place. It's a really beautiful place. Okay. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. Let's talk about how you're going to get to Germany. Let's talk about what you're going to do in Germany. Okay, so, auf Deutsch. Mm -hmm. Sprechen wir über Flugzeuge? Züge und Autos. Züge in Deutschland. Ist irgendjemand schon mal mit dem Zug gefahren in Deutschland? Have you been on a train in Germany before? What was it like? How did you like it? We generally think that our Züge, trains, unsere Züge sind preiswert, schnell und verlässlich. Man kann die Karten online kaufen oder auch am Bahnhof. Beides kein Problem. Am Bahnhof sucht ihr, suchen Glück vor, sucht ihr das Reisezentrum. Das ist der perfekte, das perfekte Zentrum für alle Tickets, für Züge in Deutschland. Und wenn ihr wollt, wissen möchtet, wann kommt mein Zug, wo fährt mein Zug hin, dann sucht den Fahrplan. The train Schedule ist called Fahrplan. Und der Fahrplan ist immer gelb. Am Bahnhof. Der gelbe Fahrplan ist die Information für alles. Alles, was ihr wissen müsst, anything you want to know, ist im gelben Fahrplan. Das ist ein großes Poster. Das ist cool. Okay. Und das hier ist mein Lieblingswort. <lacht> mein Lieblingswort ist 
Bandstandsanzeige. Wenn ihr das am Bahnhof seht, dann wisst ihr, wo euer Platz ist. Das hier ist die deutsche Zugfirma, the German Train Company, eine Firma, just one, not like in crazy England, Britain, ähm, ist Bahn. DB, Deutsche Bahn, sucht ihr, findet ihr, ist perfekt. Okay, viele, viele Flughäfen haben auch einen Bahnhof. So, das ist einfacher. Von Berlin bis nach Köln, nach München, die Flughäfen haben einen Bahnhof. Und die internationalen Züge, ein Zug nach Luxemburg, nach Dänemark vielleicht, vielleicht nach Slowenien, nein, das ist jetzt Austria, <lacht> vielleicht nach Österreich, vielleicht nach Frankreich. Diese Züge haben Ansagen, Announcements, Ansagen auf Englisch und auf Deutsch. So, ich sehe hier im, im Chat, dass, ja, viele von euch sind schon einmal mit dem Zug gefahren. A bunch of you have taken the train before. Und es gibt viele, es gibt viele, ah, okay, so, Kiwi, das ist interessant, mit, de, mit den kleineren Bahnhöfen, the smaller stations. So, Kiwi says, she saw some of the smaller stations closed, buildings abandoned, so diese Bahnhöfe waren nicht mehr da. Und das ist manchmal so, ja, aber manchmal kommt der langsame Zug, once a day, <lacht> und äh, er hält, er hält überall, der Zug hält, the train is stopping. So, hoffentlich kommt der langsame Zug dafür. Und Utkan sagt, sprechen die Menschen aus Heidelberg Hochdeutsch, ist das wirklich wichtig? Hm, okay. Ähm, ich empfehle dir, Utkan, äh, ich habe einen Kurs, äh, German Pronunciation Masterclass, unter school.fluentlanguage.co.uk. Ähm, ich empfehle dir diesen Kurs, denn der Kurs spricht auch über Dialekte und da lernst du viel über Hochdeutsch. Ähm, Hochdeutsch ist wichtig, ja. Alle können Hochdeutsch, aber du hörst, you can hear, when I speak, ich habe auch einen Dialekt. Dialekte sind normal. Dialekte sind etwas, das sehr, sehr oft kommt. So, there's, there's nothing you can do about the dialect. It, it'll come out. Aber Hochdeutsch ist unser Standard. In Heidelberg sprechen die Menschen, I'm guessing, Schwäbisch vielleicht. Ich glaube, es ist, I think it's near Stuttgart. So, they might speak Badisch or Schwäbisch, so a slightly southern dialect. Aber an einer Universität ist Hochdeutsch immer willkommen und Hochdeutsch ist immer gut. So, you generally, if you're learning Hochdeutsch in Germany, you're always on the safe side, you're on a good place. Okay, sprechen wir über Autos. Okay, fahrt ihr in Deutschland mit dem Auto? Dann solltet ihr folgendes wissen. Nummer eins, auf der Autobahn gibt es keine Limits, wie schnell man fährt. Aber ihr müsst respektvoll fahren, ihr müsst vorsichtig fahren, vorsichtig, careful, ihr müsst aufpassen, pay attention. Es ist sehr wichtig, dass ihr auf der Autobahn Kontrolle habt. Okay, also nicht schnell, 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 sondern aufpassen. Many, many stretches of Autobahn also do have what we call Geschwindigkeitsbegrenzung. It's not on your worksheet, but it probably should be, so I'll type it in the chat. Das ist Speed Limit auf Deutsch. So, viele, viele Stücke von der Autobahn haben eine Geschwindigkeitsbegrenzung und ihr müsst, müsst das immer respektieren. Zweitens. Die Lichthupe. In Großbritannien, hier in England, in Wales, in Schottland, wenn man die Lichthupe macht, when you do the, the light horn, when you flash your lights in the car, dann ist das respektvoll in, in Großbritannien. Aber in Deutschland ist das super aggressiv. Okay? Das bedeutet, geh weg! Das, dürft, das solltet ihr nicht machen. So, Lichthupe. Es bedeutet, 
wenn man mit den, mit der, wenn man das Licht am Auto an, aus, an, aus, an, aus, an, aus macht. Ja, das ist ähm, nicht sehr gut in Deutschland. In, hier in Großbritannien, hier in Britain, äh, flashing your lights is, is polite. In, in Germany, it's, it's the opposite. It's really impolite. Don't do it. <lacht> okay. Und finally, am Ende, kein Schild, keine Ampel. Dann ist rechts vor links. Ein wichtiges Wort in Deutschland, important word in Germany, ist Vorfahrt. Das bedeutet right of way. Und in Deutschland hat man die Vorfahrt, wenn kein Schild und keine Ampel, dann darf die Person fahren, die von rechts kommt. Rechts vor links. Versteht ihr das? Das wäre richtig cool zu wissen. Uh, do, you, do you understand? Does all of this make sense to you? So, auf der Autobahn, watch for the speed limits. Mit dem Auto, don't flash your lights. And when you are driving, right, coming from the right, goes before coming from the left. That's rechts vor links. Okay. Coming on to the, my favorite part of this topic, I think. Weinen, weinen and darning, weinen and darning in Germans. Okay, so Wein, Menschen und Gesang. You might have seen this as Wein, Weib und Gesang. Weib is this sort of old rude word for German, for woman, not just German woman, any woman. So we're not using that, we're just saying people. Wine people singing. So how do we have fun in Germany? First of all, let's talk about restaurants. So, im Restaurant gibt man gerne Trinkgeld. Trinkgeld ist gut. Aber wenn ihr in Amerika seid, zum Beispiel, for example, dann gibt man 15%, 20%, viel, viel Geld. In Deutschland, das es ist nicht notwendig, it's not necessary. In Deutschland gibt man 10% oder man sagt, aufrunden bitte. So, I'll explain this to you in English. If your bill is 11.59 and you want to give a tip, but you've basically been at the bar and the person has you know, brought you your food, you are not obliged to give a tip, but it's polite. So normally you would give... 10% or a little bit more and 10% here might be add up to something crazy like 11 euro 70 something so what you say what you're doing is you're just giving them 12 basically and that would be very polite and very appropriate and nobody will think oh, that was only 14% like in America where people really do mathematics it's quite crazy okay so 10% or aufrunden is perfect is good in Deutsch. Restaurants sind oft fürs Abendessen. So, Restaurant ist abends. Mittags essen viele deutsche Leute und sie gehen ins Café, zum Imbiss oder vielleicht in die Kantine. Man kann auch, wenn man kommt und man hat keinen Platz und man denkt, oh, das Café ist voll, die Kantine ist voll, dann kann man einen Platz finden und man setzt sich, you sit down with, man setzt sich zu fremden Menschen und man sagt, hi, habt ihr Platz? Ist hier Platz? Super, vielen Dank, ja. Und man muss, ihr müsst nicht eine Konversation haben, aber ihr dürft da sitzen. Wenn die Person sagt, ja, das ist okay, and it's not considered rude. So, es ist nicht unhöflich. Wir machen das, das ist cool. So, what about enjoying a drink in Germany? Excuse me while I take a sip of water. Civilized drink. Okay, wieder da. I'm back. So, people in Germany will often enjoy a drink together. It's kind of in, in the German social life, drinking, you know, not 
getting crazy drunk, but drinking is considered normal, drinking alcohol. Um, we might go out for a beer, a drink after work, at happy hour, uh, that's quite modern and in many cities happy hour is popular. Or you can have a barbecue together, that's a kind of classic weekend activity, especially in the summer. We are a country of drivers, so if you are not a drinking person, you don't like alcohol, you don't want to drink alcohol, no problem, because Germans have so many drivers and we know that you don't drink and drive, that's not okay. You don't have to worry about the alcohol because you will find so many drinks with no alcohol and they're still really nice. So it goes from alcohol-free beer, and I have tried this, it's quite nice. <laughs> you can drink alcohol-free beer, you can get grape juice instead of wine, so even in a wine region you can still drink a lot. Um, and we have a lot of coffee drinks, different coffee drinks, and Germans really like making alcohol-free cocktails too. So normally in a cocktail bar, in a pub, in a kind of nice round of people who are drinking together, you will always find a non-alcoholic option and it will not, you mostly you won't look like the person who is only drinking water because you will be able to find interesting drinks, fun drinks. So you feel like you can join in, it's really cool. Okay, Germany produces absolute world-class drinks and we have three kind of drinks that I wanted to tell you about. Number one is beer. <laughs> so you probably know this, right? Germany is famous for our beers and every local place they tend to have a brewery. So way before microbreweries were cool, in Germany people were making beer and normally beer is made by monks. That's the historic thing. So religious monks had many, many breweries in their own houses and that's when you can find something like Franziskaner, Jakobita, uh, Zisterzienza, so anything that sounds like something something er, that is usually because it's made by those types of monks and those tend to be really good beers. Beer is produced all over Germany, there's lots of regional variations so look around for the regional, the local beers and you don't have to look very far. A uh, big German beer brand is Bitburger, that's popular everywhere. I don't like it. <laughs> oh, Carlsberg is also popular, but Bitburger is kind of our classic German beer. Okay, number two, cocktails. We didn't invent many cocktails, but Germans are a little bit trendy, right? We like jumping on a trend, I think. At the moment, everybody in Germany is vegan. Um, but also cocktails. In the cities or in many, many bars, you can find lots of different variations. The most popular German cocktail, I think, is Caipirinha. The, everybody in Germany likes drinking Caipirinha, but you can also get Aperol Spritz and you can get lots of different variations. So always ask for what the cocktail of the day is, if that's the kind of thing you like. And finally, and I have to mention this, of course, German wines. Did I mention German wines? They're just, it's, there's something special about, I think, German wines because Germany is a country very far north in the world for a winemaking country. So our wines are made by small companies. It's not like America, you get enormous vineyards, lots and lots of people working on things and lots of grapes put together. In Germany, it's a bit more cottage industry. So small family run winemakers. My own family has been making wine since 200 years and this is normal and the wine was brought to us by the Romans. So German wines are a wonderful experience. I really encourage you to check those out in Germany because we don't export the best German wines. They are always drunk in Germany. So look at the wine list. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Just say I would like a sweet white wine, I would like a dry white wine. Try something that you wouldn't normally try. You will get a small amount, it's not a crazy basket of, basket, a crazy bowl of wine, um, but just give it a try. I have to advocate for German wine, it's so nice. It's just really light and not so alcoholic, it's great. Oh, Utkan in the chat, he also just mentioned Apfelschorle. Super, du hast recht, Utkan. Es ist sehr, sehr typisch. Classic, typical drink in Germany is Apfelschorle. 
or pretty much any kind of Schorle, right? So if we can put, Germans love fizzy drinks, um, so if we can put soda water in something, we will probably do it. Multivitamin saft Schorle, multivitamin juice, Schorle means there's fizzy water in it. Apple Schorle, orange Schorle, <laughs> grape Schorle, <laughs> wine Schorle, whatever you can put fizzy water in. We really love fizzy water and it's, I can highly recommend it. It's just delicious stuff. Okay. Now let's talk about how you can make friends, a few tips and how to be polite, how to make sure you fit in. Small talk in Deutschland. Okay, Punkt 1. In Amerika und ein bisschen in England, Großbritannien sagt man oft, how are you? Und die Person, die Antwort ist, ah, good, how are you? Aber in Deutschland, wenn du sagst, wie geht's, dann sagt die Person, oh, geht gut, oh nein, nicht so gut, oh, schlecht. Und dann bekommst du eine Story, eine richtige Geschichte. Warum nicht gut? Bla, bla, bla. So, wenn du sagst in Deutschland, wie geht's, dann bist du, im, dann bist du schon im Gespräch. So, all you have to do is say, wie geht's, and you're going to get an honest answer. And this is normal, this is not rude. It's completely how people take, wie geht's. It means, how are you doing, honestly. And you can find yourself in a serious conversation. Manchmal sagst du, wie geht's, und dann nach einer Minute ist es eine heavy, heavy, eine schwere conversation. Zweitens, wenn du etwas willst, zum Beispiel ein Ticket für den Zug oder ein Getränk oder etwas in einem Shop, dann sei direkt, sei direkt, sag guten Tag, ich möchte da, 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 da. Nein, nix Smalltalk. Wir möchten keinen Smalltalk, wenn es eine Transaktion braucht. So if you want to actually achieve something, don't Smalltalk. Und drittens, wenn du Smalltalk möchtest, in der Bar oder mit Freunden und du möchtest Deutsch sprechen, Deutsch üben, gute Themen mit Menschen von überall, alte Menschen, junge Menschen, ist egal, doesn't matter. Okay, erstens Sport. Sprech über Sport ist immer gut. Olympiade, Fußball, äh, Europameisterschaft, Formel 1, äh, Racing ist immer beliebt. Sport ist ein gutes, gutes Thema in Deutschland. Zweitens, number two, sprich über dein Land. Hi, ich bin Utkan, ich komme aus der Türkei. Hi, ich bin Michael, ich komme aus den USA. Und Sprich über deine Reise. Ja, ich bin hier in Deutschland. Ich mache eine, eine Fahrt mit dem Auto an der Mosel. Ich mache eine Fahrt mit dem Zug in Bayern. Ähm, erzähl etwas. Tell a story about your own journey. Das ist interessant für Deutsche. Und drittens, die Region in Deutschland. Die Region so. Ähm, zum Beispiel, eine Region ist, wenn du sagst, ja, ähm, hier ist ja, ist das hier Berlin oder was ist, was ist interessant in Berlin? Was ist schön in Berlin? Oh ja, hier in, ähm, was ist das für ein Land? You know, what, what, what is this, what is this area here? And Land is, is in Germany considered the state, right? So if you say Bundesland, that is the way to say the state, the local state. Und das, also das ist ein super Thema. Du kannst sagen, ah ja, hier ist Köln. Okay, Köln ist schön. Was ist das Beste in Köln? So, what's there to see here? Und das ist, denn es gibt sehr viel, in Deutschland ist ein ganz tolles Wort. I will type this in the chat. Lokalpatriotismus. Local Patriotism. Das, die Deutschen lieben ihre Region. Every German tends to be, they love their home region, they love the place where they live, tend to, unless they're in Berlin, they're, then they're grumpy. Uh, uh, you tend to get a really good topic. So, uh, Und dann kannst du, ja, Essen und Trinken kannst du einbauen in diese, in dieses, in diese Konversation. Kannst sagen, ja, hier in Berlin, was ist typisch deutsches Getränk? Was ist ein typisch Berlin-Getränk? Hm, ich bin in Hamburg, was soll ich essen? Was soll ich probieren? What should I try? Das ist ein richtig gutes Smalltalk-Thema. 
if you want to make people speak German to you and you are coming in this problem where people speak English and they speak English and they keep speaking English to you, it's frustrating. Then there are a few tips here from our German speaking webinar that we held previously, which is you should show them that you understand. And you can do this with standard phrases. You can go, ah, ja, ah, ja, ja, ah, ja, ich verstehe. So just learn a few standard phrases. Number two, convince them that you speak German. So do a few fillers. Um, a filler could be something like, hmm, ich lass mich nachdenken. Lass mich nachdenken, let me think. Or something like, also, ja, but just things that fill in your German a little bit. Don't go too crazy because you you will sound like a foreigner desperately trying to sound German, so that, that, that's never cool. You know, be yourself, be proud that you're a foreigner learning German, that's absolutely fine. But make sure that you've got a few things just to buy you some time because otherwise the German will think, oh, well, they don't speak German, I will just switch to English, it's easier. And you want to practice. Um, number three, work on your pronunciation. The better your pronunciation, the more confident you will be and the more you will be understood. And once again, just really want to make you aware, I've got a great pronunciation course at school.fluentlanguage.co.uk. It's very, very popular. It's one of the most comprehensive courses out there. When I made it, I was looking around, I did a lot of research. It's explained for people who don't want to learn the whole phonetic alphabet. So it's an easy way of getting into German pronunciation. And it's helped people read, it's helped people say things. So I'm, I'm quite proud of this. But also, whichever way you do this, if you take my course or if you take a different course or you read or you listen, make sure your pronunciation is spot on and it will go a long way. It's really helpful. And number three, whew, scary, bisschen nervös, aber reply in German. Just be stubborn. Even if they keep talking English, just talk German. They will get the message. Um, I try this sometimes in Welsh. It doesn't go very far yet. He done hin. But I try. You know, you can keep coming back, even if your conversation has been in English for three minutes, you can switch back and try German again. Just keep trying and you will get there. The result will be great. Okay, so, oh, Kiwi says, Das Wetter, spricht man über das Wetter in Deutschland? Um, ja, es, in, es ist ein bisschen Klischee. So, ich denke, Sport ist besser. Mit Sport bekommt man... Wetter is so, it's, it, it's almost too empty. Um, so you can talk about the weather, it's not rude, but with sports you get more passion out of people, I get, I think. Sports, I think, is my, is my favorite small talk in Germany. Sport or Essen, food. <laughs> okay, so I really want to tell you about one way that I want to invite all of you to Germany. Um, this is something that I have been working on for a few months. And this is something that has been very special for me. So I say I've been working on this, but the idea started way before that. And that is, I am inviting you. Ihr seid eingeladen, vielleicht möchte jemand von euch mit mir zu meiner Familie ins Weinland nach Deutschland kommen. How does that sound? Maybe it sounds cool. I don't know. <laughs> it would be would be really, really cool. Okay, so and I when I was putting this together, I was thinking, well, when the idea came to me, it's because I have been teaching so many German lessons. I have taught people one-to-one -one in German for, for quite a few years online. I have made these wonderful courses, pronunciation, grammar, you know, just so you can you can really see the most, you can see at one point, you know, you can just go, okay, I want to hear this again. You can go back and watch the video again. So I've done a lot of that. Now, I have, I have helped a lot of German learners find success. People learn German, you know, if they are working together with a tutor, this is great. But I also know that online courses and online classes and books, they are not the same. So I often think about, I'll come and 
sort of chat to you a little bit for a second. Maybe if I can come out of the screen. How does that? Hello. <laughs> so for me, um, I will tell you this story and it's a real example. So for many months, maybe eight months, nine months, I have been working on studying Welsh and it's a great language. It's really exciting. And I have an online tutor and I see her like this, like I see you now. No, you see me. I don't see you. Um, and it's just a, it's a really fun experience. I am learning a new language. It's exciting. Sometimes I meet some people who speak this language, but I had never been to a place that was entirely in this language. And Welsh is a small, very small language. There's not many people speak this, not like German. German is überall. Um, and I was wondering, how am I going to do this? You know, where can I speak Welsh? Um, I don't know. And then the Welsh have got this crazy national festival. Kiwi, you know this probably. It's called the East Stafford. And it's, uh, how do I describe it? It's like a big cultural week of celebration with tents and performances and prizes and competitions and concerts and everything. It's fantastic. And I decided I will go to this. And I had to go all by my own camping. And I'm not a shy person, so I was lucky. But for me, I was still really, really scared of speaking Welsh. But the minute I walked in, every, everyone around me, come right, they're speaking Welsh. Everyone around me, it was like I realized this world, the world in Welsh, it exists, it can exist. This is crazy. Oh my God, you know, it's, it's, a, real, it's a real thing. The world can exist in Welsh. And for me, this was the, exactly the special point of coming out of the internet, coming out of the books, coming out of all the ways that we have to study because we can't just go and move to Germany today. Um, we can't just, even if you live in Germany, maybe you are working in a job, you speak English, your kids go to international kindergarten or international school. There's not a lot of English, there's not a lot of German around you. You have to work. And sometimes we lose this connection with language. So I really thought you want to bring back your slides. So really show you what, what I'm talking about, hopefully. You want to speak, live, breathe German. So for me, when I was speaking, living, breathing Welsh, even for a few days only, it was so fantastic. It was the best thing. And I want this for the people who are learning German with me. So I kept thinking, well, I, have, I come from one of the most beautiful places in Germany and I want to share it with these people and I want to share it with you guys. But how do I do this? How can I, how can I invite you to Germany? And this year I decided, let's just do it, right? I'm going to invite you to Germany. Let's do it. And here is the place. Ta -da! This is my home. My beautiful, beautiful home is it's called Mülheim an der Mosel. It's a very, very small village in the middle of the Moselle Valley. So the river that you can see there, das ist die Mosel. Die Mosel ist im Westen von Deutschland, zwischen Luxemburg und Koblenz. Und es gibt viel, viel Wein an der Mosel. Das ist eine Weinregion. So hier sind die Weinberge. Und das ist ein kleines Dorf. Only a thousand people live there. So you can imagine, not many people really have to speak English every day. It's a perfect German immersion environment. This is the place that I am organizing the Fluent German Retreat. So the Fluent German Retreat is one week where you will come to Germany and I will be there and take you through different activities. We are going to, of course, have a wine tasting. It must sein, it's gonna be. Um, I'm going to show you the most beautiful parts of the Moselle Valley. You will have some time to take a break from books, 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 screens, screens, screens. And really, I will throw you in the deep end, but I will be there supporting you. So this is for everyone who wants to learn German in the wild. And if you today understand me, wenn ihr mich versteht, wenn ich Deutsch spreche, then I think you're in a good place to try this out. So you can learn the German language in the wild, not with the books, 
not with the screens, not at home, and oh, I don't have time today, and oh, I don't, this is hard work. No, we will just go to Germany and, you know, refresh. Learn German in the wild, out, out there where everybody speaks German. And I will be there supporting you so you can get over this, any feelings of shyness and learn more than you've ever learned before. That's the idea, because in my one week at the Eisteddfod in Wales, I learned more than ever before. I learned faster, quicker, and I will be there making that happen for you of Deutsch. And really my goal is that you don't have to say, oh, mm, sorry, I don't speak German. You just take a chance. Take a chance. That's what the Fluent German Retreat is about. It's really designed to be a breakthrough for you. The dates are 16th to 21st October. So it's happening in the middle of the grape harvest, which is when this is a beautiful, it's a beautiful place all year round or most of the year round. Um, but it's especially wonderful during the grape harvest. You can drink grape juice right from the press. It's beautiful and everything smells good. All the leaves are different colors. It's a romantic and wonderful place. It's really nice. And we have chosen this week in October and I am looking for people who want to come and do this retreat with me. And if you are interested in coming, that would be really fantastic. Uh, so our destination, like I said, it's the Moselle Valley. I am arranging for you when you come, there's a hotel room for you and all of your meals are included in the price. You don't have to worry about anything. You just come and learn Deutsch mit uns. Learn German with us. And it's a really an unusual experience. It's not maybe the cheapest trip to Germany that you can have, but I think it's a wonderful break, a wonderful opportunity and a really chance to, to enjoy Germany as, as it should be. I think, and I will be there as an experienced German tutor who knows what German learning is like. I will be supporting you. I will be running workshops to really build you up to a point where you're having a conversation and you're speaking German confidently and you're feeling really great about it. The website for this retreat is fluentgermanretreat.com. If you want to get something to click on, you can look on the side of this website Here's a little logo with a little owl. This logo here, you can see this. You just click on that. Um, probably best to say open in a new tab in your browser or new window, just so you stay here and just go and check it out. You know, do you guys have any questions about the retreat? Does this sound interesting to you? Does it sound good to you? Um, how is October working for you? Is this the perfect date? hopefully. <laughs> but you know, tell me your thoughts in the comments. I will be here. But also, I'll take a little bit of time now to kind of run through your comments, eure Fragen, your questions, and I'll be here answering your questions, giving you some tips. So if you want language learning tips, or you've got any special questions, I'm going to hop into the chat right now and kind of look through it and answer your questions. And really looking forward to hearing from you guys. Now, how do I switch the screen share off? So, hier bin ich. Okay, dann schauen wir mal, was ihr so sagt. So, und kann erstmal vielen Dank, dass ihr hier wart, dass ihr ein bilingual Webinar mit mir ausprobiert habt, that you tried a bilingual Webinar with me. Das ist richtig cool. Um, und es ist, ich denke, etwas anderes, etwas Besonderes und um, hoffentlich hattet ihr Spaß, genauso wie ich. Es hat mir Spaß gemacht. Um, let me know how much you understood if you're feeling better about your German, if you're feeling like you learned something today. And in your worksheet, one of the last questions is, what did you learn today? I would really love, just type your answers in the chat. Um, tell me what you learned today. Okay, so I'm just gonna have a little look through. So we talked about the weather, about Apfelschorle. Utkan says, Lichthupe, flashing your lights in a car. Findet man auch aggressiv in der Türkei? Hm, ja, ja, das verstehe ich. Es hängt davon ab, wann und wo ähm, man das macht. So it depends on when and where you do it. In Deutschland ist Lichthupe, man macht es fast nicht. Most people don't do this, light flashing. Nur in einer aggressiven Situation. So it kind of means 
I am being aggressive. In Großbritannien, just for me, when I came to England and I first started driving here in England, um, it's crazy because people <laughs> people do a different thing. They will flash their lights because they want to say, oh, please go. Please go, I am being nice. Um, so it's a polite thing here. It means, oh, I can see you. In Germany, it means, get out of my way. So Lichthupe, don't do it. Uh, Michael was also saying, right turns before left turns, what? Okay, so the idea is if you come to a crossing, usually like this, Germans don't really have a lot of roundabouts yet, um, and there's no sign, kein Schild, no traffic lights, keine Ampel, and there's two cars arriving at the same time. The car that is to the right of the other car gets to go first. So if you have a car on your left, you're automatically on their right. Um, and that means you've got to wait. Uh, no, they have to wait and you get to go. If you have a car on your left, you tend to be able to go. If you have a car on your right, they go. Hopefully this makes sense. So it's just a little bit of a driving kind of <laughs> Deutsche Fahrschule, German driving school. <laughs> okay. Oh well, to see some of your some of your comments, really really interesting. Ah, uh, super. It's freut mich total, dass ihr so viel verstanden habt. Das finde ich total cool. So Rebecca, Joji, Tashina, uh, Michael, rechts vor links, alles klar, perfekt. Kiwi, vielen vielen Dank an euch alle. Es hat mir auch Spaß gemacht. This was a lot of fun for me as well. Um, like I said, first bilingual webinar. And I may, well, would you be up for doing this again? We'll do it again sometime. And I've been thinking about putting together a little German study club where you can join and we're doing the webinars, webinar worksheet, and you might get one every month. So that's something that I kind of have on the books, but I can't give you an exact date for it yet because I am only working on the German retreat right now. Um, this German retreat is it's very meaningful to me and I would really love to invite you to come and check it out. Um, just tell me more, you know, about, tell me more about your, you know, your experiences, your thoughts, even if it doesn't look like something that you want to do, it would be still really helpful to know, you know, does it look cool? Mülheim, I can assure you it's an amazing place. I had my wedding there last year. That's how beautiful it is. Yeah, it's my home, but also people came from England and they fell in love. This is a wonderful place. So I can't wait to really invite you to Mülheim. And if this time the date is wrong or it's too long, it's too short, it's too expensive, something, just tell me what it is so I can make a good retreat for you next time when this one is finished. Okay, Utgan says, where can you post your worksheet? Hmm, I don't have anywhere specific to post it, Utkan, so the best thing you can do maybe is post a link to it in this chat, like a link to your Google version um, in the chat, or upload it to Dropbox and post a link so I can see it, and I will be happy to give you some feedback. Okay. So, guys, vielen, vielen Dank an euch, an euch dass ihr hier bei mir wart. Um, if you want to get the slides or you want to get the replay, make sure that you sign up to the Fluent Newsletter which you can get here. And that's where you're going to get the link for the replay. So just click there in case you haven't gotten the email. If you have the email notifications for this, you are already there. If you haven't had the email notifications, just make sure you hop on there. Okay. Bye guys, tschüss.